Hi, everyone. This is Edwin from ESC Bubble. And today, I'm joined by another one of the quarterfinalists of multi Eurovision Song Contest. It's Stefan. Stefan, Hi. thank you very much for joining me. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to see you, as always. <laughs> Same here. First of all, tell me, how did this multi Eurovision story come about this year? So, really and truly, in all honesty, it was always on the back of my mind, you know, whether I should do a comeback. You know, my last comeback, for those of you who remember, was back in 2016. But ultimately, at the same time, I wasn't really planning on making this comeback perhaps this year. But in the background, you know, in the meantime, I was still making music. I was still writing a song. At the time, I was going through a very turbulent relationship. Many people know that the music that I'm releasing right now is also very personal to me. Um, and basically, I was pouring in my emotions into the song, which wasn't specifically for Eurovision. Um, but then when I called Musha to help me out on the lyrical side of things, because obviously certain things were very triggering for me, um, we just had this, you know, this gut feeling that we should actually submit the song. And here I am, I guess, you know, hoping for the best. Now, as you mentioned, this song is very personal and uh, I'm guessing that the title says it's about a heartbreak. Can you tell me more about this? Yes, absolutely. So with the song Heartbreaker, really and truly, if I'm being honest, we are not really reinventing the wheel or telling a story that was never told before. I'm sure many people are able to relate to the message of the song. However, I am getting to tell it from my own personal point of view, how the heartbreak affected me personally. So mm -hmm. there is definitely a bit of an artistic perspective in the lyrical content, which is also yet to, you know, as the public has seen already in the quarterfinal in the verses that have been performed. Um, so yes, I wrote the song after this turbulent time. Um, I just wanted to showcase the message to be able to say things that I wasn't able to say to my ex-lover previously and I wanted to say them in a cheeky and empowering way. So really and truly I'm getting to use this platform to finally, you know, um, get the therapeutic energy that I needed and to release my message on such a wide scale. As you mentioned before, you took part back in 2016 and it was a song written by foreign composers and uh, this year you're coming with a song which you personally co-wrote with other Maltese composers and in a way you are showing a new side of yourself. Was this your goal by entering multi Eurovision Song Contest? Yes, absolutely. I mean, last really and truly since 2016 I wasn't releasing um, a lot of music, I was focusing on my university studies, I was still making music but I was doing it for myself, you know, behind the scenes I was working on reinventing myself and the sort of genre that I wanted to put out and the genre that I want to show is an alternative pop genre. I want to, I envision myself as being, you know, this theatrical artist on stage in terms of the movement that I am making, in terms of the songwriting and the storytelling. So ultimately I did MESC in order, you know, to showcase, to finally showcase this new sound, this new sound and this new side of me as an artist on a wide platform, being the most popular show um, in the country. And we've seen your performance a couple of days ago and it looked really, really powerful. Can you tell me more about how it was being on that stage and performing your song live for the first time? No, it was absolutely fantastic. I had really, to be honest, I had forgotten, not forgotten really and truly, but I had really missed, you know, being in that setting, you know, that professional ambience. The fact that the team behind the backstage team at PBS was so helpful, so encouraging. Um, no, I was just, I was just lost in a daze. I actually forgot that I was on stage. It was as if I was on my own performing at home. And I hope that that actually came through on stage. So, no, it was just a beautiful experience. And I just hope and I keep my fingers crossed that this journey will take me another step further now. Yeah, I'm guessing when you feel on stage like you feel at home, that's when you know that you're doing things right. And uh, during the quarterfinals, obviously, you had to have like a very broad down performance without anything, without any props, any dancers or anything. What are you preparing for us for the semis? Should you qualify? That was, that was a challenging experience, but at the same time, you know, I actually enjoyed it and took the challenge um, head on. So in terms of what I'm preparing for the semi-final, I know this is going to sound cliche. I know this is the same thing that everyone probably says. Genuinely, I cannot, I cannot reveal much, but what I can tell you is that there is definitely 
going to be an element of mystery even though the mm-hmm. song is called Heartbreaker I didn't want it to be the cliche cheesy lovey dovey kind of love scenario you know there needs to be that element of mystery I can tell you that I will not be alone on stage but I will not tell you in what way or form in what shape or form that will happen so okay. we'll, it's, it's a bit of a question <laughs> we'll be looking out for that performance then in the semis hopefully <laughs> hopefully <laughs> And uh, tell me, what would it mean to you to actually win Multi Eurovision and go on to represent your country this year in Liverpool? I uh, know, first and foremost, that would be fantastic. That would be the ideal scenario. It's definitely a dream of mine, you know, to perform mm-hmm. in such an arena, on such a big stage. But ultimately, um, Eurovision nowadays, as you're very well aware, has changed since the time I started watching it back in 20- 2003. Um, since Lorraine won the competition, the industry has started looking at the competition from a completely different light. Mm-hmm. Up until recently, with Maneskin's victory, it was also it's also continued to evolve even further. We have seen artists like Rosalind practically and Duncan Lawrence who have also broke into the international charts, even in mm-hmm. the States. So practically now record companies are actually looking towards the Eurovision as a really good vehicle, you know, to promote their artists and their music and also looking providing visibility to the other artists music mm-hmm. so i would look at it as an adventure which would provide me with a lot of more with a lot more contacts to network more collaborations hopefully with artists and also pushing my music with these record companies even further so it would mean a lot to me yeah <laughs> From a as well, ultimately. and seeing as you've been watching the contest since 2003 do you have a favorite eurovision song Yes, it is. I'm not going to mention Euphoria, even though it is incredible. <laughs> I absolutely love that song. I'm going to mention the song which was related to my first Eurovision memory, which I still love because I love the genre and, you know, the ethnic sounds to it. And it's definitely every way that I can by Serta Berene. I think that was an absolutely amazing song. That is actually my favorite Eurovision winner ever. Yes, I really love that song. That ethnic vibe, you know, that mm. the Turks are very well known for. It's really cool, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. And what is next for you after multi Eurovision and after, well, hopefully Eurovision? Yes, so what is next for me? Definitely more music. I am currently still in the studio. I'm also writing new material. Um, so, yes, definitely a lot more releases, more live gigs and performances. And ultimately challenging myself to bring out the most creative side possible that I can give to the Maltese public. Are you working on new music both as a composer as well? Yes, yes, as a composer and even author, lyrically. Um, I'm currently working with my producer from Kilkika Studios, Wikili Shikluna, and also with Hitki Komoskat. Um, so yes, it's been, it's definitely been an amazing journey so far. Well, thank you very much, Stefan, for your time. Uh, I you. wish you the very best of luck in multi Eurovision and uh, hopefully see you in Eurovision as well. And... I hope so. Thank you. That would be the best. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be looking forward to uh, to hearing more new music from you coming soon. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye everyone. <laughs>